Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Ali and this here is Benson. So in this video, I'm going to be going through five ways you can tell whether your chinchilla hates you. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again on my channel. I don't think chinchillas have the capacity to feel hate. It's a very human emotion and most animals don't have that capability. However, what I really mean is five ways you can tell that a chinchilla is fearful of you. Number five. Now number five is if you're approaching your chinchilla's cage and they're constantly and continually running and hiding from you, that could be an indication that yeah, they're a little bit fearful of you. Now, although running and hiding is a very typical chinchilla behavior because they are prey animals and they do like a dark enclosed space, they are still quite inquisitive. And if they're not coming over to you, to check out what you're doing, what you're up to, then that is an indication they might be quite fearful of you. Now there is a few remedies you can put in place to help with this behavior, and that is to just sit with them by their cage calmly, but letting them know that you're there still, and eventually they should come over to you and you can offer them a treat, because that will reinforce the idea that you're something good and not bad, nothing to be fearful of. Now. Having said that, this can take a long, long time, especially if your chinchilla has come from a rescue or somewhere where they've been mistreated in the past. Because if they've had a lot of traumatic experiences in the past, it can, can take a long, long while to regain the trust of a chinchilla once they've had that kind of experience. So yes, and some chinchillas are just naturally a little bit more skittish and a little bit more um, flighty than others. That being said, it does take time, so please don't think, oh, I've been doing this for a few weeks and nothing's happening. It will come with time. You've just got to put in the work and the effort to try and get your chinchilla used to you. So it takes time, but it's well worth it. Number four, your chinchilla is constantly spitting at you. Now, what I mean by spitting, some people call it crabbing, I think, and that is this sound here. And this is a really a defensive sound. So if they're making this sound to you all the time, it's a case of the fact they do not want them, they do not want you near them and if you can back away do back away i know sometimes it's not possible say you want to do cage maintenance or cleaning the cage then you may have to still get in there while they're making this noise but if you can back away do back away and this is a bit of a catch-22 when you say well you want this behavior to stop but you but you want to leave them alone at the same time so you know how do you get past that if you want if they make this sound you want to leave them alone and then you can't interact with them so the way the best way i've found to deal with a chinchilla that constantly constantly spits at you and just doesn't want to be around you if they spit at you or make this crabbing sound or whatever you want to call it um then take a step back and if they still make that sound take a further step back and once they've stopped making that sound stand there for a while and eventually just move ever so slightly forward and then stay there for a while and see how they react and if they don't react to you let's take a baby step forward again and see how close you can get to the cage before they start spitting at you now if you repeat this every day eventually you will find that you'll be able to get nearer and nearer to that cage and eventually you should be able to be going right up to the cage and not have this there's some there's somewhat unfavorable interaction with your chinchilla so yeah it's about taking baby steps to get them to close in that circle of fear so at the moment they've got a massive circle of fear around you and if you just gradually gradually push it a little bit further eventually that circle of fear closes eventually you may even be able to pet them or pick them up that comes with time but yeah it's all about baby steps and you know making them feel comfortable and not scared so number three 
your chinchilla raises up to their hind legs and tries to urinate on you. Now, females do this more than males, but males can do it as well. And again, this is a very, very defensive thing. And this is really back off. I do not want you near me. I'm going to spray urine at you. Now, if this is the case, just leave them alone. That they're, they're obviously really, really freaked out. So eventually you can do the same thing as what you would do with the spitting. So gradually get nearer and nearer as time goes on and eventually they should let you near their cage. This takes time and a lot of patience. So number two, when your chinchilla's out, all they want to do is hide away and they don't want to interact with you. Now, this isn't really an indication that they hate you. This is an indication that they are fearful of the environment that they're in. Some chinchillas are really, really don't like big open spaces, it really, really freaks them out. And some chinchillas just aren't comfortable during playtime at all and actually don't like it. So this isn't really an indication they don't like you, this is an indication they don't like the area or the environment they're in. In all honesty, all you can do is try and make the play area as inviting and safe and secure for your chinchilla as possible. So lots of hideaways and eventually they may come out and kind of interact with you. And if they do, obviously offer them a tree or something nice to show them that there's nothing to be scared of. But this one really isn't the fact they don't like you, it's more the fact they don't like the environment they're in. So as I say, sometimes really kind of like big, big areas, anything like that can freak them out ever so much, especially if it's not somewhere they're familiar to. So my brother used to have a chinchilla and when he used to let his chinchilla out, it used to just bolt straight up the back of the radiator. Obviously the radiator wasn't on, but and he would stay there and wouldn't come out and that would be it, that would be his playtime. And then my brother would have to try and coax him out from behind this, this radiator. So some chinchillas just are really really fearful of new spaces big spaces don't want to be in open areas would rather be secure somewhere far away in a little tiny enclosed area so if they really don't like playtime say so, um it's a case of trying to make it as friendly and inviting and safe for them as you possibly can okay Number one, your chinchilla bites you. Now, I don't mean little nips, because every chinchilla can give a little nip. Benson will probably give me a little nip in a minute to say, I want to go down now, I've had enough. And that's quite normal. A little nip, which is like a little tiny bite, um, or even nibbling, that is perfectly, perfectly normal for a chinchilla. But what I mean by biting is I mean a true bite, where they want to actually physically cause you some harm. So this is one where they really, really latch on and put their teeth right in. Often breaks the skin and is extremely, extremely painful. Um, I've only ever had maybe two or three true bites from a chinchilla in my entire time of owning chinchillas. And I've owned chinchillas for over 25 years now. And um, yeah, I've had quite a few of them as well. I've had many, many, many chinchillas. And I've only been bitten properly, properly be bitten by a chinchilla three times. So if your chinchilla's constantly biting you, as in really, really painful bites, so you might need to look at what were you doing to cause your chinchilla to bite you. Now, if it's something like you were holding them, stop holding them. Just try and try and avoid holding them. Still stroke them, still pet them, and maybe use um, a dust bath or some other method to get them in and out of the cage. Eventually, they may get used to you being to being held, but it's again a gradual step thing. You can't really just go in and just start handling a chinchilla that doesn't like being handled. You've got to do it baby steps at a time. So first of all, just try touching them, getting them used to being touched, and then try gradually picking them up for maybe a second or two, then putting them down. It's all about really, really, really baby steps to get to the point 
where you can actually hold your chinchilla. Now I say, if a chinchilla is biting you constantly, it's probably best just to avoid that entire activity that is causing them to actually physically really want to hurt you because that's a defense, very, very, very defensive thing that they do. That's really the last resort is the bite. Sometimes chinchillas will bite you by mistake. Say for example, they mistake you for food. I've often had that where my hands have smelt like pellets and um, they've given my finger a good old bite. So that is quite different from constantly biting you and being quite defensive. So if your chinchilla is biting you, just best to stop the activity that is causing them to actually do that and kind of try to take a step back and try doing it baby steps to get where you need to be. So if your chinchilla is biting you through handling, then don't handle your chinchilla. Just try touching them or try just giving them a pet or try and offer them food to them and um, see whether they take it out of your hand. That's baby steps and eventually you may be able to get to the point where you can handle them. Some chinchillas just do not like to be handled at full stop. And if that's the case, if you've got a chinchilla that doesn't like to be handled full stop, you have to just respect that. Say, okay, you do not like this. I am not going to put you through this. So that's the five ways I think you can tell whether a chinchilla actually dislikes you or is fearful of you. You can always, always improve the relationship you have with your chinchilla. It just takes time and patience and putting in the effort, really. So, yeah. So, goodbye now from me and this little chap, Benson.